The Exmoor ponies are a breed, but also a land race, suggesting that over time they've adapted well to local environmental conditions. The ponies are wild in the sense that they breed and roam free on the moor, but there are groups of farmers, volunteers and societies who strive hard to secure their bloodline. Keen to find out more, Equestrian World recently met up with the Wallace family, the owners and guardians of the Anchor Herd. It's one of Exmoor's largest and has been in their family for generations. Well, it goes back to uh, the last war. Uh, my great uncle Frank Green uh, acquired the, uh, a farm uh, near here, uh, Old Ashway Farm uh, in the 1920s. Uh, and with that farm came a number of Exmoor ponies. And uh, we basically, through the following generations, built the herd up with the family to the numbers that it is today. And it's a tremendous uh, achievement, considering that after the Second World War, uh, we had uh, around 10 to 12 ponies in the herd. And today, uh, we have somewhere near 100 ponies. During the conflict, Exmoor was used as a military training ground, so many of the ponies were accidentally killed. By the end of the war, numbers had declined dramatically, so the breed was classified as an endangered species. Back in 1818, Sir Thomas Ackland, the last warden of Exmoor, took 30 ponies and established the Ackland herd. So how did the anchor name come into play? The anchor is very interesting. Uh, when Exmoor was part of the Royal Forest, uh, there was the keeper of the Royal Forest uh, were the Ackland family and uh, the ponies uh, originated in that forest above the Porlock area and of course Porlock is on the Bristol Channel and uh, we uh, believe that that was a sort of nautical term for the ponies being nearer to the sea and uh, we've carried it on but uh, our ponies can either be known as the uh, uh, part of the Ackland herd or more recently uh, the Anchor herd. Every year around mid-October, an important part of the herd's management takes place. The event is known as the Gathering. The ponies are rounded up and herded off the moor to the Wallace Farm, as Emma explains. The importance of the Gathering, well, it really is very much to get the ponies off the hill to wean the foals um, so that the mares don't have the foals uh, sucking them over the winter so that helps their condition and gives the ones that are back in foal the opportunity to go through the winter without uh, taking too much out of them and it also gives us the opportunity to get the filly foals off choose some ponies that we can use to promote the herd for showing next year and generally check that we haven't got any interlopers um, i.e. ponies that may have been um, put on the moor um, by mistake. Yes, the purpose of the gathering is uh, to uh, separate the foals from their mothers. Uh, we know that as weaning the foals, then looking at them to make sure that they have all the correct attributes to enter as uh, fully registered Exmoor ponies into the stud book. So what are the correct characteristics that define a purebred Exmoor pony? She has an awful lot of forelock which covers well below her eyes to aid the runoff of the rain. She also has a ridge which runs horizontally across her forehead here, which again moves the rain to the sides so that it's not going right down over her eyes. And she has what is unique to an Exmoor pony, a hooded eye, which is a fatty lid across the top, which again disperses the water across her eye rather than into her eye and a fatty lid underneath so when her eye is closed the eye ball is protected completely from the elements. She's got a big square muzzle which supposedly warms the air as it enters her body. Her teeth, if she'll let me show you without meeting me, are an absolute match for a bite. Um, there she can grab the gorse and pinch it or the heather shoots and that will be her staple diet in the um, hardest of the weather on the moor when the grass and, um, and other vegetation has all died back. On to the big day, which could logistically be a nightmare with so much ground to cover on the moor. But David has all the bases covered, he hopes. 
It's an exciting and at times a challenging day on the moor. The weather can throw us a bit of a spanner at times with visibility, but we have a good team of people who come and help us uh, every year. Some of us on horses, some people on ponies, Exmoor ponies. Uh, we've got others on quad bikes. And we try and uh, cover the uh, area with radios as well and push the ponies from one end of the moor to the other uh, till we can bring them actually onto the farm. It's lovely to see the ponies coming in off the moor, um, but we never know where they're going to be grazing on that morning. So it's very much a matter of covering the whole moor with quad bikes and horses and bringing them off Winsford Hill onto a smaller, more controlled environment of South Hill. And then they can just cross the road um, back onto the farm. We're proud as guardians, as part of the heritage, they're part of the farm and they're part of Exmoor and as owners of one of the largest herds in the world. Not a day goes by when we're not delighted to have them uh, as part of our enterprise. With the roundup over and the majority of the herd down off the moor, despite a few minor hiccups, it appeared to be a successful gathering. Well, it's, uh, we've got there. Yes, if you don't succeed, you try, try again. And yes, there were a couple of moments today uh, where the ponies weren't uh, always uh, as cooperative as we would like them to have been. But with the great team of people that we've had with us today, we have uh, uh, achieved our mission uh, and we've got uh, all the ponies in that we wish to, yeah.